Behind me, the Powers Poblachen here in Warsaw. This is the home of Prince Joseph Poniatowski. His home, the place where he had his famous parties, also the war office. Who was Joseph Poniatowski? He was, in fact, a major figure in Polish history. Patriot, general, minister of war, sometime marshal of France. Join me in this episode of Poland Daily History, where we learn more about this remarkable Polish figure. So he was not sort of uh, completely, he wasn't leading the life of a monk, certainly. These are not such vices that no, no, people no, no, no. wouldn't forgive him. I think him. Tried also, I think, is yeah. always to try to give a flavour of the man. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he, he was, other people remember him. Full blood. Uh, full uh, yes, blood. as this great military leader and this sort of hero of, hero of Poland. And, and so, but it's also, I think, useful to give a picture of the overall, try and get the overall character of the man. And I think at one point, one of his guests here was the brother of Louis XVI, who then became eventually Louis XVIII of, uh, of, of France. So that it's quite is, interesting that, that, the, that, that he would have, a, you know, he would have a, as a guest somebody whose actual brother would, would actually, funnily enough, be executed as part of the revolution. And then, he, because he, the, eventually, Joseph came to be working for Napoleon I, which is actually quite an interesting idea of how, in that time, people didn't seem to bear quite the same grudges they might bear now. And you, exactly. and you can't imagine that happening in the modern world. That's, but, a, that's a very nice uh, case study that, uh, yes, he was a uh, future Louis XVIII, uh, who was uh, uh, an enemy to Napoleon. That is, that is. I, I mean, I, I knew that, but I didn't. Uh, I didn't um, uh, look at it uh, from from this perspective. It is. It is really interesting. Well, I suppose yeah, if you move in that sort of those sort of circles, I mean, politics becomes sort of secondary to the, the this idea of. If you get along with somebody, exactly. I mean, and, 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 and I did, and then of course we get to this stage where he took some persuading, but eventually, oh, the, there was the the, the Grand Duchy of. Of, of, of Warsaw was... Mm -hmm. was I, One was, thing to clarify, because we realize that people say um, Duchy of Warsaw or Grand Duchy of Warsaw interchangeably, which is not quite correct, because, uh, of course, it's a detail. detail. Uh, Duchy of Warsaw, that was the, the, initial, uh, the initial state that was created in 1807, yes. and it was augmented in 1809, after the victorious uh, campaign, uh, campaign in, in Galicia uh, against Austria. And only after that, we call, we should call the, the Grand Duchy of Warsaw, the Grand Duchy of Warsaw, the Grand, yeah. Grand Duché de Varsovie. Because, because there was some extra territory. Extra territory, so that's why it's grand. A sort, of, a sort of clawing back of some of the territory that had been lost as a result no. of the partition. The old uh, capital of, of Poland, that is uh, Krakow, that, that's, exactly. not, that's not nothing. No, no, not <laughs> at all. No, no, no. And of course, Poniatowski was... Uh, was the author of the concept. The very, very very brave because uh, now imagine uh, you are after a, a battle that is uh, um, uh, indecisive. I mean, I mean the Battle of Russian, 19th of April 1809, and then you took the decision to abandon the city, the city. I mean War Warsaw, the capital. It has a very. It may, might have had a very bad well, uh, psychological well, impact. Well, as you mentioned, it was a, at one point. It was he was. Prince Poniatowski was repeating a, a, a that, prior mistake. People, that's what the public opinion was yes. saying, that he's repeating the same mistake. And yet, he crossed the river and flanked, in a sense, the Austrian army by entering to, to Galicia, to, 
um, the Lublin region first, Sandomierz, and then to, to Krakow. The Austrians were very, um, they were certain that it would be a very easy campaign. And they sent, I think, the, <laughs> the least talented uh, commander, Prince Ferdinand Deste. And it was, it, it, it was to be a very, very short and victorious campaign for the, for the Austrians. Uh, luckily, it didn't. But uh, as, a, as a soldier, as, as a commander, a military commander, I think Prince Joseph was quite, quite personally quite brave. I mean, there are stories, personally quite there are stories of him sort of joining, you know, bayonet attacks with infantry and sort of getting not a, not a general on the hilltop behind, but no, really no, no, no. in the at thick of the fight. At, Rus at Russian, at the Battle of Russian, he was, he, he, at, at some point, he joined the ranks, literally, I mean, with, with, with his bayonet, uh, you know, uh, fighting as a simple soldier. So he was personally very, very brave. Which I think, is, again, you might think a prince or somebody who's been living this sort of slightly debauched life in Warsaw, but only a few years before, might have been incapable of actually getting stuck into the, the horror of the, you know, the cut and thrust of battle in a literal sense. But of course, there he was, which mean, is probably why he's obviously, by many people, seen as such as a great commander, because it wasn't theory, it was actually practice. Um, getting getting stuck in with the with the, with the at soldiers. the Battle of Leipzig, in which he eventually died, uh, he refused to flee from the battlefield. I mean, he said that uh, he was uh, that God uh, bestowed him that that these are I'm I'm, I'm trying to translate uh, bestowed him uh, the uh, Polish honor, and it is only to God that he will give it back. So if we just yes, if we that that that's if we just sort of think about. <laughs> Immediately when he's entered um, uh, Krakow and restored mm -hmm. Galicia, what did what did Prince what did Prince Joseph do next? So we, we think of the period immediately after 1809. What he does next is to take care of uh, installing Polish administration so he came in back. Galicia. Yes. Uh, and and uh, so it it took a couple of months, and then he had a, a tri triumphal entry to Warsaw. The Ark of Triumph was. Uh, was built to his, to his welcome, simply. Then in 1810 uh, uh, and uh, mostly 1811, uh, uh, he's um, taking care of the political safety of, of Poland. That is to say, because Napoleon is hesitating at because that I time. Because Napoleon was a bit, bit... Whether to attack Russia or not. And, and, I think and Prince Joseph was traveling to, 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 to Paris, of course, under official... Of uh, course. But I think, I think it's right to say that Napoleon was a little wary in the early of Prince Joseph. He didn't, although he ultimately became Minister of War and, and, and Commander-in-Chief of the Forces, in the early stages, the French were a bit, or Napoleon particularly, was a bit, was, wasn't keen to give him supreme commander at, at the very beginning. That is beginning. correct. At the, at the very beginning, when the Duchy of Warsaw uh, was created, and... Prince Joseph was granted the, um, uh, the Ministry of, of War, because that was, that was the name at that time. It's today that we say Ministry of National Defense. But, that you, is... but Ministry of War, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I think in the, in the United Kingdom, we had the Ministry of War as late as sometime in the 1960s. There you go. Uh, so we had the Ministry of War, the Air Ministry, and the, and the Admiralty. And then it was all amalgamated to this sort of rather anodyne sounding Ministry of Defense. Yeah, this euphemistic, you know, the terms that don't. Yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> that, exactly. that, that conceal the truth. Conceal the truth yeah. <laughs> if only they did.